Thank you, Nick. I'm indeed obliged for the ODI uh, and for availing this opportunity to talk here uh, about ABA. Uh, ABA is a very important issue back at home and definitely is figuring very high also in the interest uh, of the media and uh, uh, think tanks and all interested uh, groups. Uh, the title, The Litmus Test for Sudan's Peace, reminds me with the title uh, in which we have used also this word, litmus, uh, related to Sudan peace, but by then we were referring to the right of self-determination in southern Sudan. I remember way back, maybe Sarah will still remember or recall, uh, when we were negotiating the Machakos uh, protocol, uh, and then the question posed was, are we going to be the only exception in Africa uh, uh, where we will accept changing the boundaries inherited from the colonial era or not? And the answer that we have all accepted is that an <coughs> agreement on self-determination or rather presence of an agreement or understanding uh, on self-determination in the whole uh, 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 CPA, the, the, C the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, will be the litmus paper for Southern Sudanese by which they will differentiate between a genuine uh, deal or a raw deal. And we have accepted that in principle, and we said, okay, let's then begin by agreeing on a right of self-determination being given or according to Southern Sudanese, and then let us let that be the starting point for uh, the CPA. I fully agree with the, with the uh, uh, title today, and I feel that if we had, in fact, managed to uh, have exceptionally the right of self-determination and we managed to deliver on the promise to give Southern Sudanese the right to really choose between unity and cessation. And if that had indeed been uh, uh, the litmus paper for the CPA, now beyond the implementation of the CPA, RBA will be the litmus test for all Sudan and will be the litmus test for the durability and sustainability of Sudan. Comparing ABA with offering the right of self-determination to Southern Sudanese and delivering uh, on that promise really indicates the importance of this, uh, this, this issue to peace and the vital role we are expecting an agreement on ABA to play in sustaining peace in Sudan. Uh, in order to make myself clear on this, I will try to go through the issue in the 15 minutes allocated to me uh, by first talking briefly on the history of the matter the history of the dispute, and then moving to the peace process, and then finally speaking about uh, the prospects for solution. ABA is an area that exactly straddles the boundary of northern and southern Sudan. It's not a big area, very small area because it is a very important area. It's important for so many reasons. First and foremost, it is the only area where we have, in Northern Sudan, a Southern tribe. And that happened because of a historical incident. The British, for so many reasons that I don't have time to discuss, decided that this particular southern tribe 
shall be transferred from southern Sudan to northern Sudan. And the tribe was literally transferred from southern Sudan to southern to northern Sudan. That is agreed and accepted by everybody. What was not agreed was whether the tribe that was transferred in 1905 was occupying the same territory that it, it, it occupies in 2005 when we agreed on the CPA, or was it occupying a different territory. Nonetheless, that was also right now agreed. Because in spite of a dispute that consumed five years of the implementation era of the CPA, we went to The Hague and an arbitration had awarded us a certain uh, delimited area that we all accepted as the ABA area. So that uh, part of the dispute had been resol resolved. That's one reason why ABA is special. Secondly, another reason is that this tribe, when they moved from the south to the north, or have been moved or transferred, whatever word you want to use, did not remain as a southern tribe. So many things had happened. The area had become a melting pot, an area of coexistence <coughs> between that particular southern tribe and a northern tribe. And the two tribes had literally moved into each other's territory and intermingled and coexisted. <coughs> the Ngok Dinka tribe from the south and the Miseria tribe from the north are right now a sui generis community, having their own traditions, having their own lifestyle, and managed, in fact, to overcome the difference of language, religion, ethnicity, culture, livelihood style, you name it, and gave us a very unique society to which we are referring as the ABA society, the ABA people, the people who are coexisting together. And this is why when we had referred to this area in the CPA, we did not call it the Ngokdinka area or the Miseria area. We call it the ABA area. Having in mind that there is a vast Dinka territory to the south of it, which is referred to as the Dinka homeland, and vast Miseria territory to the north of it, which is referred to as Miseria homeland. But well, this is, as I said, a huge generous area of coexistence. That's the second factor that really delimits this issue. Then, so this brief historical background, we'll move to what happened to this area, which had, <coughs> in fact, uh, been uh, shaped by all of those factors and dimensions. When the Addis Ababa Agreement was signed in 1972, the said, we would like, in fact, to reconsider our stay in the North. And we would like to find out whether that's, that's uh, the, the possibility of transferring the area to the South is still viable or not. And that possibility, by the way, was tried in the year 1952 and before and all of the Ngokdinka chiefs had adamantly resisted any uh, attempt to transfer them or to restore them to the south. They said, we are different. We are not northerners, but we are not traditional or conventional southerners. And that was reported by the British uh, inspectors who uh, had try, uh, who oversee this, uh, uh, this process. Uh, and we would like to be part of the North. And the Miseria, as soon as they had their own uh, rural council, the Miseria Rural Council, in which the ABA had been included in recognition of that, had elected the Ngokdinka chief 
although there were about 20 chiefs, all of them in Syria, they have elected the only Ngokdinka chief as the chairman of the Misiria Rural Council. That was the first rural council uh, 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 established in the area in about the year 1951. In the cognition to the fact that the Ngokdinka decided not to go to the south and preferred to stay uh, in the north, thinking that they have a uh, special relation with the Misiria which they want to really uh, sustain. Uh, this, this really tells you how the two communities were living in peace and in coexistence and in full recognition of each other for a while. That while can easily be said to have started in 1905 when that area was transferred to the south and continued up to 1964 when the first war had always spilled in IBA area. Uh, because of that over spilling of the war to Abiyah area, the area was included in the 1972, or referred to rather, generally, in general terms, in 1972, uh, in the 1972 Addis Ababa Agreement. Uh, I can say both communities were not happy about that reference. The Ngokdinka intellectuals <laughs> were really pursuing the idea of uh, annexing the area to the south. But the commoners, the ordinary people of the Ngok, were not at all happy about this idea, thinking that they should be still loyal to the tradition that was inherited from their elders just one generation back, and they shall not move their area to the south. However, the issue continued until we m met in, Addis, in, uh, in Nairobi in the year 2000, discussing the possibility of a new peace agreement between the North and the South. And the issue was uh, uh, or proved to be one of the difficult issues because it was against the first principle that we have all accepted. If in the 1972 Addis Ababa Agreement we were speaking about one Sudan, United Sudan, in which you can easily talk about removing one territory from one part of the country to the other or administering it by other part. We have accepted in the year 2000 that we will give Southern Sudan the right of self-determination, the right to choose between secession <coughs> and <coughs> So we are no longer speaking about just moving a, a piece of land or a territory or an area from one part of the country to the another. We are speaking about international boundaries that were expected to be erected in that part of the country. And we have accepted, as a matter of principle, that the boundaries left by the British in 1st January 1956 shall be respected. And that was the first statement we, uh, and that was the first snag we hit. How can we really resolve the ABA issue Although we have accepted that the source is the source is south is south and the north is north, <coughs> and there is a 1956 boundary which shall remain inviolable. And because of this, in fact, the ABA issue continued dragging on, starting from the year 2000, the year 2000, up to the year 2004. Maybe uh, uh, Sarah and the Honorable Consul uh, are, are still remembering the days <coughs> we have spent trying to figure out how can we relate the IBA issue to, uh, to uh, the whole CPAD issue. And finally, thanks to the assistance of uh, the mediators and to the Senator Danforth's proposal, we have accepted that uh, we will exempt this area in particular from the 1956 boundary rule, but with conditions. That the area shall maintain its, its special status, <coughs> be it in the north or in the south, as an area that resembles unity and diversity. And we have referred to as the bridge that unites the north and the south. And we refer to it as a, an area of special coexistence. 
that the presidency shall see to it that a process of reconciling the two communities of the area shall be started as soon as we sign the peace agreement, and that process shall be overseen by the presidency itself. And we agreed that the two communities shall share the, uh, the resources of the area equally and equitably. 2% of the oil produced in the area, which is one of the oil, the, 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 the oil rich areas in Sudan, at least by then. 2% uh, of the oil produced shall go to the Miss area, and 2% shall go to the Mawdinka. The administrative council of the area shall be also shared by the Miss area and the Mawdinka. Right now we have the, the chief administrator from the Mawdinka and the deputy chief administrator from, from the Miss area. And at the end of the day, it's not only the Ngok. Although the Ngok were the only people who were, was brought from the south to the north, but it's not only the Ngok who will determine the future of the area. We agreed that the Ngok Dinka and all other Sudanese residing in the area shall cast a separate ballot on the day of the 9th of January itself, that is the referendum between South Sudan and Northern Sudan, to determine the future of Abiyay. Shall it be in the north? or go to the south. This is because we understand that, in spite of the fact that only the Ngok were transferred in the, uh, in, in, uh, 100 years back, but now there is, a, there is a, a, a different situation on the ground. There is a mixed community, and you can't just single out the Ngok and ask them to, 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 to determine the future of the area. Uh, that was the agreement we had. Uh, unfortunately, we failed to determine the boundary of the area. That was job was given to uh, an expert commission. The expert commission failed miserably to do the job or the task it was asked to do and had exceeded their mandate. And we claimed in the SCP that the, S the, the, the experts had exceeded their mandate. And they had, in fact, delimited in the state of RBA area the oil rich area in the north and drew a boundary to the north of it and said this should be the ABA area. Literally all oil fields of the north producing 150,000 miles per day were included in the experts map. And this is why in the NCP we rejected that, uh, that, that report. And we said we are ready to challenge it anywhere. We are loyal to the agreement. We are ready to accept it as is. But I'm going to accept this report. This is why we had to go to arbitration, to international arbitration, under the auspices of the, uh, 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 the International Chamber of the International Court of Arbitration at The Hague. And there, in fact, uh, our position was upheld, and uh, the, the, the tribunal said, the experts had indeed exceeded their mandate. And instead of speaking of an area uh, of 25,000 square kilometers, the ABA area was reduced to 10,000 square kilometers. And instead of speaking of an area that produces 150,000 barrels per day, right now the ABA area produces about three to 6,000 barrels per day. So most of the oil fields were, in fact, according to the arbitration uh, award, were excluded from from the IBA area. And I said, well, fine. <coughs> Once we have managed to defuse this, then let us go and implement the IPA protocol as is. This is our area. This is the bridge between the north and the south. This is the area which is the Ngok Dinka and all other Sudanese residing in it, leading this very special lifestyle, are entitled to determine its future. And this has, in fact, become the next point of disagreement between us and the SPLM. As soon as we left the Hague, the SPLM said, well, it is not only, it is not all the, uh, the residents of the area, it's only the Ngok people who are going to vote. And you see, this is, this, is, this is strange. Look at those guys. Look at the administration we're having. 
It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a joint administration. Look at the protocol. It's giving the Missouri 2% two, uh, two of, the, of the oil of the area. Look at the reconciliation process, which you are about to start. If you are just speaking about the Ngogdinka, then why on earth we had this special protocol? Why we have mentioned specifically that all Sudanese are Sudanese residing in the area? Uh, shall, 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 shall determine the future uh, of the area. Why we didn't just uh, use the same phrase which we have used for, for, the, for the, uh, the Southern Sudan referendum, which is just says that Southern Sudanese shall vote. Why didn't you say only Mogdinka shall vote? And this is the problem, this is the dispute which is, is still unfolding. We went to uh, Addis Ababa and uh, for talks under the mediation of the Americans. And the Americans said, well, let's talk about the lifestyle of the people. If we say that only those who are residing permanently in the area, as the SPLM speaks, or as the SPLM position is, this means we will exclude from the area the nomads, and the nomads are about 90% of the Miss area. Those people stay in the RBA area for about six, seven, up to eight months a year, and then they are in the move for the rest of the year. So how can we solve this? We asked them to bring the communities, and they brought the Miss area and the, uh, uh, and the uh, Ngogdinka people. Uh, and they have to meet and talk. And the Ngogdinka the, the, the Ngog elders after the meeting said, or rather during the meeting, told the mediators that, well, we're going to accept that every Miss area who stayed in the area for eight months shall be given the right to vote. We discussed this, and we said, well, eight months is a period. Normally, the Miss area stay in the area when the rainy season is very short. But this depends on the climatic changes we witness and we see. We can't say for somebody who just stays there for seven and a half months that they are not entitled to vote. That's unfair. Let's, instead of just sticking to the eight months, you know, extreme, let's be reasonable and try to find a yardstick that at the end of the day will uh, uh, include all who, are, who have a legitimate uh, claim in the area. And finally, the Americans came up with the proposal of 185 days as the litmus test for, for residents in the area. And we accepted that. Everybody who stays in the area for 185 days, that's to say six months plus <coughs> two or three days, shall be given the right to vote. See, that's fair. For those who stay less than six months, they should try to look for another place to call home, even if they are nomads or pastoralists. Uh, unfortunately, the SPLM did not accept this. And they thought that it's only the Ngogdinka and then those who are residing all year round. That the only, was the only concession they made there. And said that it is, it's meaningless, because it literally excludes about 90% of the, of the Miss area. After the collapse of the Addis Ababa talks, and it was so uh, very clear that we will not have a, a second ballot uh, casted on the 9th of January uh, on I in ABA, uh, in addition to the, to the ballot of the Southern Sudan referendum, uh, uh, Becky came up with a proposal that let us, Becky uh, took over the negotiations in his capacity as the leader of the uh, African Union uh, high uh, implementation uh, forum, high level implementation forum. Uh, and Becky said, let us try to be creative and think of something other than the referendum. The referendum, according to Becky, and something that we also as two parties had of late accepted, is a zero sum game. It will either take the area to the south or uh, uh, leave it in the north. And both are not going to be satisfactory solutions for everybody. This is a, a, 
uh, basic, uh, basically pastoralist community, and it's very difficult to draw boundaries here in Khartoum or anywhere and tell them that those are the boundaries that you have to respect. Let us try to think creatively of a solution that really uh, uh, takes everybody on board and uh, which we can refer to as a win-win solution. And uh, this is why he came up with a very compl co complex formula of maybe partitioning the area between those area uh, between uh, 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 on the basis of dominance, the area is, which is dominated basically by the Miseria, the Northern Tribe, and the area which is dominated basically by the Ngok, but linking them together to preserve this very special context of the area. And to see to it that the area at the end of the day will remain uh, the bridge that links the north and the south. And the very long history of coexistence shall also really be taken into account. That was basically the formula which he presented. He presented uh, six proposals, uh, ruling f up, out four of them, and uh, focusing on two which are basically, you know, um, uh, around uh, uh, this proposition. We accepted that formulation. But unfortunately, the SPLM rejected it and insisted that in lieu of a referendum, ABA area shall be immediately restored to the south with a, a presidential decree. And they presented, they presented in that meeting a draft decree to President Bashir, asking him to sign it immediately, something that really uh, uh, that was reminiscent of uh, an ultimatum. We, are, we, we do not accept it, and President Mbeki was very much disappointed uh, to see his name written in that, on that resolution as, uh, as a witness, uh, or on that draft resolution. And he said, well, that's not a way to negotiate things. We have to take so many things on board and to really try to agree on a formula that saves us trouble. Unfortunately, because of that collapse, the second collapse in just about two months' time, uh, conflict erupted in the area, and we have lost dear lives in the area over the previous two weeks. That this is the second conflict to erupt in the area since we started uh, the uh, implementation of the CPA, and the uh, uh, and uh, two out of four conflicts that happened since the CPA was signed in 2005 had taken place in Abyei. This is where we are. After the historical visit of President Bashir to uh, Juba in the 4th of January, just to say just five days before the, before the referendum, the Southern Sudan referendum, President Bashir and His Excellency First Vice President Kiir agreed that they shall continue negotiating the issue of ABA until it is resolved and that it shall be on their own docket, shall be discussed at that very high level uh, with the assistance of Mbeki. And the meeting had been of late uh, uh, set for that on the uh, 27th of, uh, of January. We're very hopeful that uh, uh, with this determination, the two parties, and particularly uh, after the success that we have uh, in conducting the, self, the, the Southern Sudan, uh, okay, the Southern Sudan referendum, uh, and the and the the momentum and the euphoria crea created by that success, uh, we will uh, really manage to maintain a constructive spirit uh, during uh, the negotiations, this high-level negotiations of IBA, and we will manage also uh, to tap the spirit of coexistence uh, that had existed for more than 100 years right now uh, in the community of the area, a spirit which was taught by the two communities uh, and which assisted them to immediately before blood dries uh, to seal a pact between them and to hug each other uh, in Kadugli just one week back and to say, we will not fight. Let the politicians in Khartoum resolve the issue. 
But whatever happens there in Khartoum, we on the ground will not suffer. We are not going to fight anymore. This is a commitment made to us by the Miseria and the Mogdinka last week in Khartoum. Uh, we think if the presidency manages to really uh, uh, tap uh, all those positive meanings, we might see the uh, ABA uh, new peace agreement before the stipulated date of the 9th of January, uh, which uh, the 9th of July, uh, which will witness uh, the uh, emergence of the new southern state. Those few words, I come to the conclusion of uh, my presentation, and thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador.